Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. We are back with the Crosstrek and we're gonna do a video on the BFG KO2 tires. Out of all the things I've done to the Crosstrek, I still get the most questions about the wheel and tire setup. Um, so we're gonna answer some of those common questions and I'm gonna give you an update on how the tires are doing after about 15,000 miles. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have comments or questions, you can leave those below. I'm really good about answering them or you can send me an email if you have a quick question. Thanks guys, let's get started. I thought I'd start out with why I decided to go with the methods and the KO2s. Initially, when I bought the vehicle, my goal was to keep it a daily driver, but to make it safer and a little bit better off-road. And to do that, I wanted to start with uh, a tire that gave me a bigger sidewall and a, obviously better traction off-road. Here in Tucson and around Arizona, if you watch the videos, you know that we have a lot of you know, rocks and sharp rocks and things like that. So sidewall protection was one of my biggest um, issues that I wanted to take care of. And if you watched my very first off-road video with this car, you know that I got a pinch flat, I hit a rock uh, going about 30 miles an hour or so on a dirt road, uh, hit the wheel, damaged the tire. Um, and the funny thing is at the beginning of that video, I had talked about <laughs> the fact the only thing I was worried about was a pinch flat type flat. So I knew right away that I wanted to get um, a better wheel and tire. So with the 15 inch rim, obviously that gives you a, a taller t uh, sidewall, which is good. You could air down, gives you more flexibility um, going over objects and things like that. At the time, there really wasn't a lot of wheel choices available. This is about three years ago now. So uh, I really liked the way the methods looked and I got the idea from LP Adventure. So that's what I ended up going with. As far as the tires go, I researched a number of different tires and the KO2s kept coming up and I've had a pair in the past and I really like them. Um, and out of all the reviews, the big things that kept hitting, hitting were they last a long time and they're relatively quiet for how aggressive they are. And I didn't really wanna compromise the everyday drivability with a ton of road noise so in the end, that's why I ended up going with these. Um, there are a lot of great tires to choose from as well as a lot of rim options, but this is the way I went. Let's talk most common questions that I get about this wheel and tire setup. Uh, probably the biggest one is, do they fit a stock 18 Crosstrek? And the answer to that is yes. You don't need any springs, you don't need a lift, they'll bolt right on and you'll have no issues whatsoever. If you go to some place like Discount Tire or one of the main uh, retail sellers of tires, when you go in to price them out, they're gonna tell you they don't fit. <laughs> I actually, uh, when I went and got mine, Discount Tire ended up finally calling the manufacturer to double check that they would fit because their computer kept telling them they wouldn't. So you can assure them that they do fit, show them my website or whatever, have them call Method directly, but they will fit no problem. Another very common question I get is, why did I go with the 215s and not a 225 tire or even the 235s that are offered um, in the correct size? for this wheel and our car. The standard width of the Crosstrek tire is 225, um, and I would have gone with that, but BFG, the simple answer is BFG does not make a KO2 in the correct size for this wheel and tire in 225. You can jump to a 235. I didn't wanna do that at the time. I wasn't sure if, if there would be rubbing. Uh, I also didn't want the extra weight. It just, I had seen a couple of videos with people with the tires, they just looked huge and I, figured the Crosstrek's a little underpowered as it is, and um, if I can get away with just adding a little bit of extra weight, then that would be the way to go. So that was the reasoning, along with the fact that LP Adventure um, had them on their uh, cars that they had built. They had 215, so that's the way I went. They are about a half inch more narrow than the stock tire, but I don't think there's, it doesn't look bad, and it's not like you can really tell when you walk up to the vehicle that they're narrower. Another common question is, do they fit pre-2018 Crosstrex? And my understanding is yes, they do, but just double check before you buy yours, but I'm pretty sure they fit the 2017s and prior without any problems as well. No lift needed. People ask a lot about miles per gallon. Does it affect it? And I can say I only had 2,000 miles to really compare it to as far as what they get now, but I've not really noticed any difference from that. Uh, I actually got one time 33 miles per gallon with these wheels and tires, and that was calculated. Generally speaking, I get between 26 and 28, uh, normal driving when I'm towing, going off-road, etc. depending on the time of year, how much I'm using AC, how much I'm warming the car up in the winter, uh, things along those lines. But um, I haven't really noticed anything significant miles per gallon wise. 
As far as driving experience goes, the only negative I can tell you is the same one, same thing I've been saying really from the beginning, and that's just the extra noise. You're looking at between uh, three and five decibels increase at the same speed on the same road. Obviously, when you go to an AT tire, it's way more aggressive than stock, so you're gonna have more road noise. I was expecting road noise. It's not atrocious. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who have these and they don't mind it at all. So it's just kind of your comfort level. If you really like how quiet the Crosstrek is like I did, then you may be a little disappointed when you put these on, but I think the benefits to off-road and the look of the vehicle is far outweighed by the extra noise that you have to deal with. Um, they can be a little droney on the highway, depending on what speed you're at. But overall, I think it's a worthwhile purchase and I, they've done really well for me. These tires are wearing very well. There's been no increase in noise over stock that I've noticed. And when you take a look at them, there really is no discernible wear and tear on them at all. They still look basically brand new. I have not had any issues with flats or anything along those lines. Some people will say that the KO2s are not very good in snow, uh, they're not very good in mud, but here in Tucson and Arizona, I really don't have to worry about those two things. Um, I've driven in snow with them once, and you can see the video in my video list, and I had no issues. Uh, I have not really done a lot of mud driving, so I can't really talk to that, but as far as everyday driving and just basic off-roading, they've been fantastic, and I've had no complaints as far as that goes. Again, the only thing I can say negative is just the noise, um, whether or not it's more, they're more noisy or less noisy than other AT tires. I can't speak to that because I haven't had any other ones on this vehicle. Would I buy these again? Absolutely. I think the benefits that you get in the weight and how, you know, how much better the car looks with them, I think, but the off-road benefits are significant and um, there's really no negative to putting them on the car. Some people talk about the plus 15 offset that the wheel has, that it can wear, uh, cause wear of the bearings. I don't know enough about it to, to say yes or no. I've read both sides of the argument. Some people are adamant that it will cause problems. Other people say no. So I guess we're gonna find out uh, 50,000 miles from now if it does affect the wheel bearings at all. All right guys, so that about does it for the method update. If I didn't cover something that you wanna know about, please uh, send me an email. You can find that in the description or leave a comment below and I will answer that for you. A lot of you guys have asked for a shop update, so we're gonna run through the shop real quick. For those of you who wanna check that out, stick around and I'll just show you what I've been up to and what the shop's looking like these days. So let's check that out right now. All right, so for the most part, I think you guys have seen everything that's been going on here and if you watched the last couple updates. But it's a little messy in here because I'm working on this big giant, this is gonna be a torsion box assembly outfeed table. And this is the bottom. And inside there's a big honeycomb of uh, plywood. I can show you a picture of that up on the screen. And this big torsion box is actually gonna go onto this cart that is super heavy duty. And we'll sit on here and there's gonna be drawers. There's uh, six drawers on every side. In the middle will be cabinets most likely. I haven't decided yet. And then on these outside sections, there'll actually be other cabinets that fit in here. And as you can see, it's on casters. And so this will roll around um, as an outfeed table next to the table saw. And then once I get all that wood over there cleaned up, it'll sit kind of in that corner for the most part and give me a big work surface to uh, put things together and work on glue ups, all that kind of thing. This is not my design. This is from King's Fine Woodworking. So if you guys like woodworking channels, his is excellent. His whole family's involved and great narration. Um, you can buy plans from him and that's where I bought these plans uh, to make this thing from him. So as far as everything else in here, I think you guys saw I got the sander. It's been a while now. And then the bandsaw over there. But uh, otherwise, everything else is pretty well the same as it's been. Uh, the miter station, I think you saw, I made that a while ago. Anyway, thank you guys. Um, not much else to go over in here. Porsche is doing well. I just had to replace a couple hoses on that and I'm probably gonna produce a video. I made, I did film most of that. Not too hard, just time consuming. So anyway, you guys take care and we will talk to you later.